welcome back to an episode we are going to check out the classes and uh, maybe even more depending on how quickly we can do this this time it's still the character development yes the first few episodes are just this very interesting very 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 interesting uh, usually i just make a very long episode for that but this one is uh, beyond this world <laughs> all right now, let's get into the classes. The Barbarian. The strong embrace the wild that hides inside. Keen instincts, primal physicality, and most of all, an unbridled, unquenchable rage. Right. Any details here? Ah. In this case, it's all of the proficiencies, like those, but they are related to the Barbarian. Very interesting. Um, in this case, simple weapons, martial weapons, light, medium, and shield armor. It doesn't seem to be like heavier stuff. Uh, maybe it's only the cleric? No, morning stars though, they are cool. Uh, like oh, look at this. It also changes your uh, attire, at least at the beginning. Very interesting. Yep, very nice. So, simple weapon, morning stars. Um, I'm actually looking for like, uh, not medium armor, but maybe heavier stuff. like. Where does the heavy armor stuff come from? That's... Oh, maybe the fighter? Yeah. Yeah, sure, makes sense, of course. Barbarians are more, like, offensive, right? So they don't get that. But the fighter, they, of course, get heavy armor, which is really interesting. Hmm. Wearing heavy armor will not impose disadvantage on your attack rolls or prevent you from casting spells. Oh. Wearing medium armor will not impose disadvantage on your... Oh prevent you from casting spells. Now, this is very interesting, um, because that would... Now, the big question is, should you wear a robe or uh, any other kind of uh, stuff, though? That's very weird. Because what you need, like, uh, kind of like with um, uh, Skyrim, right? Um, you end up starting with a, with a caster and you wear robes until you unlock the heavy stuff, and then all of a sudden you are spell casting, like, uh, knight. Which is really, really dangerous. All right. Um, like usually, what happens here is like um, armor kind of hinders you doing certain things. But the question is just how exactly does it interfere with uh, things? Because you don't know, and then you're just creating characters left and right. And whatever. So, what do we got to do with actions? We got the rage action. While raging, you are stronger, and you deal two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons. What's an improvised weapon? And when throwing objects. Oh, we can throw stuff. Nice. The superpower of the humans. Um, melee and improvised weapons. And when throwing objects. Yeah. Anyway. You have resistance to physical damage, or... Doesn't resistance always uh, mean, like, 50% uh, reduced damage? That's actually kind of interesting. Rage ends early if you don't attack an enemy or take damage each turn. Damage each turn? Uh-huh. You can't cast or concentrate on spells while raging. Well, makes sense, but... Very interesting. What is the bonus action? Replenishable resource. Your secondary resource in combat. Oh. A bonus action. That's cool. That's actually really nice. Going barbarian. A number of times you can enter a rage. Uh huh. Once per long rest. And this one is once per turn. That's actually pretty interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> Between every long rest, we can uh, get into rage. But rage gets me two of those each turn. That's pretty neat. You can't cast... Well, yeah, we got that one. Now you have resistance and advantage on strength checks and saving throws. Nice. What about this one? Unarmored defense. While not wearing armor, you add your constitution modifier to your armor class. Oh, okay. So you basically have to play this naked. Very interesting. Wearing hairy armor impedes your rage. Oh. It says, uh, while not wearing armor. What's considered armor? Light armor? Or like, nothing at all? And where are the items supposed to be worn, right? Do you really have to go into combat naked? <laughs> that would be quite funny. Uh, just weapons and nothing else. And all of a sudden... The constitution is the armor class, which is really, really weird. Okay, so the next one... Uh, yeah, should we go up? 
top to bottom or actually yeah let's go top to bottom uh that's very interesting the fighter of course fighters have mastered the art of combat wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like a second skin they also got the healing ability class action uh draw on your stamina to heal yourself uh, that's a pretty nifty one that's actually really nice so fighters can heal themselves ah oh, what a convenient ability I would say everybody should play a fighter <laughs> for, the, for the simple fact that they have heavy power armor and healing spells all right rogues oh wait what about the weapons simple weapons martial weapons mm. the thing is what is a martial weapon <laughs> like give me an example um rogue with stealth skill and uncanny reflexes rogues versatility lets them get the upper hand in almost any situation we got the sneak attack when melee uh, and deal extra damage to a foe you have advantage against and uh, makes you more likely to succeed yeah you have advantage the thing is how do I get advantage also works if you have an ally within 1.5 meters of the target and you don't have disadvantage okay um, use the lower line you get by now yeah so I somehow need to get advantage uh, on the enemy and then I can use this we have an ally with him. So the ally is the distraction. Uh, it's actually pretty, pretty neat. Nice team combo. So if every... Yeah, what if you have a, a team just consisting of rogues? Then you can just do this all the time, right? Melee, backstabbing, whatnot. And then you have the sneak attack range. Wow. Deal extra damage to a foe you have advantage against. And the same thing, 1.5 meters. So the 1.5 meters for this one is just... Why does it say melee? Sneak attack range. That's weird. Oh, I think I know what they mean. Like, you basically go really close to them and uh, deal damage, obviously. But this one says ranged, right? Um, but this one seems to have a melee, yeah, melee two meters. So you do a sneak attack with a bow because reasons. Because your aim is bad. Okay, simple weapons. Hand crossbows and long swords and rapiers and short swords and light armor, of course. That's the proficiencies. Next one is bard. Like uh, the rogue, but more magic. Wait a minute. There looks like that. See, see this? There's actually a weapon missing. Um. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Something that I totally forgot. The Look at this. See this? The uh, fighter is actually uh, does actually have something else here. We can give him something else. Adopt a particular style of fighting as your specialty. If you got archery, you gain plus two bonus to range weapon attacks. Oh, that's cool. You gain plus one bonus to armor class. The dueling, when you are wielding a melee weapon that is not two-handed or versatile in one hand and no weapon in the other, you deal an additional two damage with that weapon because we have fancy full... But it still keeps the two-handed swords in here. That makes no sense. Great weapon fighting. When you roll a one or two on a damage die for an attack with a two-handed melee weapon, that die is re-rolled re again. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. A one or two. That's actually pretty neat. So if you mess that up, you can deal more damage. That's pretty sweet. When you have a shield, uh, the protection, when you have a shield, impose disadvantage on an enemy against your allies but when you are within 1.5 meters. You must be able to see the attacker. What's reaction? Reactions such as opportunity attacks are responses you can have to events. Reactions can trigger both during and outside of your turn. Oh, 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 we found ourselves a nice mechanic that we could abuse reactions meaning that if we can get our squad to react to almost every situation um we can get the upper hands uh with additional actions that we can do that's pretty funny so two weapon fighting when you make an attack with your offhand weapon you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the attack an ability modifier is like uh, on an ability like this one here to the attack when you make an attack with your offhand weapon. So, how is this supposed to be understood? Like, we use two weapons, sure. Uh, how does it scale? Questions. Alright, so we got the rogue. The rogue has no specialty in here. 
Then comes the bar, of course. You know, music is more than a fancy, it is power. Through study and adventure, you have mastered song, speech, and the magic within. Now that is interesting. An awful lot of spells here, look at that. A vicious macre. It's all their creature. It has disadvantage on its next attack roll. And the disadvantage means they roll twice and the worst one will be used. So, uh, whiz save. Yeah, with wisdom, right? That's very interesting. What does wisdom actually do, like, other than be there? If the roll is equal to or higher than the difficulty class, the target resists the effect of the attack. Yeah. So, wise people cannot be mocked because they can just laugh it off. Uh, senses and intuition, proof spellcasting for clerics, strukes, and rangers. Now, I thought that would be like a enchantment cantrip. Very interesting. So, take only half the, the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. We got the blade ward. Uh, has to be activated, of course. And then there are spells. Okay, so there's a difference between a cantrip and a spell. Spells are the special things. Mm, level 1 spell slot. Use to cast spells. Sure. Once per long rest. And your secondary resource in combat. Bonus action. Uh huh. Very interesting. So there's action and then there's bonus action. Interesting. There are circles and then. and there are triangles. <laughs> Uh, heal a creature, you can see. No effect on undead and constructs. No effect, not even a negative effect. That would be quite interesting though, but no. Looks like healing uh, doesn't seem to work the same way on undead in here as it does in Divinity 2. Again, I'm comparing, but uh, let's see. Then we got uh, the Dissonant Whisper. Frighten a creature. It will be easier to hit and cannot move. On save target still takes off damage. Oh. That's very interesting, so it's a nice way of making sure you always hit. Very nice. Oh, the rectangle thing is the spell slot. Uh -huh. Now we cut it. Tasha's hideous laughter. Leave a creature prone with laughter without the ability to get up. Huh. The raffle spell. The creature must have an intelligence of five or more in order to get the joke. The target can try to shake off the effect each time it takes damage. Uh, that's actually very interesting. The creature must have an intelligence of five or more. So if you're stupid, you cannot laugh because you do not understand the joke. It's so funny. Wisdom save, obviously. Uh, and concentration needs... Because why? You can only cast concentration spells at a time. Uh, no, one concentration spell at a time. But why do you need to concentrate on that? I would have thought this is a little more like a joke, so an instant kind of thing. Make yourself, oh, the heroism, make yourself oh, a target immune to frightened and gain five temporary hit points each turn. Can only have temporary hit points from one source. Oh, okay, so you cannot supercharge yourself with this in order to sustain multiple forms of damage. Very interesting. At least not, I don't know if this is uh, specific to heroism um, or maybe just in general with a bonus health thing. Bardic Inspiration. Inspire an ally to add a... Uh, a plus 1d6. What? Wait a minute. 1d4. Plus 3. I mean, I can understand 1d4, right? A d4 is the die, but... This one says a plus 1d6, right? It adds a plus 1d6. Eh? It should be a 1d6, not a plus 1d6, like, but it adds twice. It's weird. Bonus to the next attack roll, ability to check or saving throw, meaning that it will always work. Maybe. Uh, what is a bardic inspiration, though? Replenishable resource. Again, uh, through stirring words and music, bards can inspire allies or augment their own attacks. Interesting. So, what else we got? Class feature. You gain two level one spell slots, which are restored on a long rest. Uh, fancy, fancy, fancy. Until long rest. Oh, okay. So, this one just gets activated and you're good. Um, now, what kind of cantrips and spells can we actually select? These are the two that we started with. 
Uh, but we can also just get the mage hand in there because it's fun. True strike, gain advantage on your next attack roll, sure. Gain advantage on charisma checks against non hostile creatures. Yeah, you could actually try that before dialogues. I think this is what you use it for. Not in combat kind of stuff. Infuse an object with an aura of light. We got that one. And the minor illusion. I can pass by creatures to investigate. Meaning that we can sneak around them or just walk around them. If that even works. Depending on how the uh, how well the enemy just uh, investigate. Very cool, very cool. So we can be like a stealing kind of dude with a bard. Uh, what could we do? What could we do? What could we do? The mage hand just seems to be such a nice ability. It's amazing. What about the spells? Oh, wait a minute. Why are there f Yeah, there are four spells. Um, there are four spells that we start with. But what did it say about the uh, spell slots? Class feature. You gain two level one spell slots, which are restored uh, on longer. Two level one spell slots. Um... But why do we have four of them? Hmm. Maybe you always start with two. Who knows? That's weird. Level one enchantment. Yada yada yada. But uh... why do we have four? Oh, maybe maybe it's the high elf kind of thing. Wait a minute. Um. Nope. Has nothing to do with that. High elf cantrip. Sure. We can just do that again. Huh. That's very interesting. This one has an intelligence uh, check in there. So, what do we have here? Dark vision, advantage saving throws. It has nothing to do with like spells so far. Interesting. Starting instrument. Ooh. Does it actually change anything? No. Pick the instrument you'd like to use. It will influence the soundscape. When you cast spells, it can be changed later by equipping a different instrument. Oh, we also have that thing. Oh, that's cool. Wait a minute. That one is nice. Kind of sad sounding though. Hand drums okay. But is there... Are there other instruments? That would be sweet. So, what else we got in spells? We got ourselves, uh, of course, the starting stuff. But there's also animal friendship, yes. The creature must have an intelligence of three or less. Oh, so what if you have an intelligence of four? You're right in between the slots, right? So having an intelligence of four makes you not an animal or not behave like one. <laughs> That's actually really interesting. Um, yeah, makes you not behave like an animal. And you're also stupid enough to not get distracted by jokes. By this thing here. Five or more, three or less. So there's a sweet spot of four intelligence that makes you stupid enough. <laughs> but not too stupid. Okay. Condition ends early if you are an... Uh, or if you or an ally hurts the target. In a higher difficulty mode, the target might become hostile when the spell ends. Okay. Up to three creatures receive a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls. Ah, Bane is nice. Charm a humanoid to prevent it from attacking you. You gain advantage on charisma checks and dialogue. And enemies have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. Oh, just like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And once it messes up um, in higher difficulty mode. What does it say in higher difficulty mode? What's considered to be in higher difficulty mode? I don't know what a higher difficulty mode is. Right? There's, there's like There are three difficulty modes that I know of right now. What is a higher difficulty mode? Does it con... Is it like the two and the three? Or like what? Uh, there's easy, medium, and hard, or whatever it's called. So... Charm person, we got that. And no effect on that because of the heal and whatnot. And of course, magically change all aspects of your appearance. Ooh, disguise self. Magically change it, but can we actually uh, select how we are supposed to look? That would be sweet. Fairy fire. I'll target within the light turn. Uh, visible and attack rolls against them have advantage. Nice. And featherfall. Oh, you and nearby allies gain immunity to falling damage. <sighs> now that is convenient. Just as a convenient spell, you should have that. Maybe there's another way of not falling to your death, but that's good. 
Long Strider. Increases creature's movement speed by 3 meters. Uh, until long rest. Ooh, that's awesome. Everything that is uh, present until long rest might be a really, really, really cool thing. That could make the game just a breeze. Quite literally. Put characters into a magic slumber. Oh, the sleep. Select targets up to a combined 24 hit points. Wait, what? Okay, so in this case we can hit multiples. And it's dependent on hit points. So up to. So if the enemy has like 24 hit points, does it count as sleep? The position ends upon taking damage. Okay. And it's not permanent. Um, gain the ability to comprehend and communicate with beasts. Until long rest. Again. Okay. Until long rest. Yes. That's awesome. Let's hope we can have as many buffs as we can. So this is actually pretty cool. I would go for more utility kind of board, like uh, running, talking to enemies, featherfall, right? This is sadly just 10 turns, but um, how often can you use that one though? Recharge once per long rest? Oh yeah. Mm. So, and then we got ourselves the hideous laughter. And of course, thunder wave, which is a lot of damage. There is a wave of thunderous force that pushes away all creatures and objects. Uh-huh. Okay, on safe targets, still take half damage. Nice. An AOE base spell, kind of. Alright. So that's at least the bard. Very interesting class. Uh, the next one is uh, the monk. Channel your cosmic enlightenment by deftly dodging and efficiently dissembling your foes through stunning strikes and a whirlwind of martial art attacks. Of course, they don't wear armor for some reason. That's weird. They don't have proficiency in armor, but they still wear something. So there are like um, clothing. Uh, yeah, there is clothing that is not considered to be armor. Very interesting. Simple weapons and short swords, or at least. No, there is no armor. Very interesting. So, what about the sorcerer? Oh, four cantrips, even. So, sorcerers don't just have spells, they got cantrips. That's cool. The only problem, like, uh, the thing is, um, yeah, the whole cantrip uh, idea, at least for me, it's kind of new. I kind of started playing Baldur's Gate with the whole spell idea. So, uh, no cantrips, just spells. Uh, Alright, so, sorcerers are natural spellcasters. Throwing and hey, wait a minute. Uh, I totally forgot about the monk. Sorry about that. Um, so what do we got? A flurry of blows, bludgeoning, and punch twice in quick succession with the same kind of damage. And as of course, key power is the magic that flows through all living beings. You can use key points to fuel your advanced monk techniques. And they reach out, of course, on short rest. Okay, so that's short and long rest. Okay, that's good, sir. Key is the magic that flows through all living beings. Uh, you can use it to exceed your body's physical capabilities. There's unarmed defense. Your reflexes are as effective as any armor. While not wearing armor, you add your wisdom modifier to your armor class. Nice. I don't know if there is something else with unarmored defense, so I can use another class, so I can get even more uh, armor modifiers. That would be kind of funny. Attacks with monk, oh, uh, martial arts dexterous attacks. Attacks with monk weapons and unarmed attacks scale with your dexterity instead of your strength, if your dexterity is higher. And uh, the deft strikes. Attacks with monk weapons and unarmored attacks deal one to four bludgeoning damage, unless their normal damage is higher. Hmm. And then there's of course bonus unarmed strike. After making an attack with a monk weapon, or while unarmed, you can make another unarmed attack as a bonus action. Nice. While unarmed. Why? Okay, that, uh, very interesting. While making an attack with a weapon, or while unarmed. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, now the sorcerer. Very interesting, too. A magic light. So, sorcerers are natural spellcasters, drawing on inherent magic from a gift 
or bloodline. Okay, so heaven. Ah, so this is what it is. So sorcerers are just magic users uh, from the get-go. And wizards might just be the ones that learned it the hard way. But let's just get uh, surprised, though. So this is, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, we got, of course, cannon trips and all of them. Uh, we got two spells. All right. What about this one, though? Weapons, daggers, quarterstaffs, live crossbows. <laughs> I'm so going for a crossbow. Like, I, I probably know that the quarter stuff is, like, um, better at one point because of some bonus effects that it has. But come on. We're going for crossbows. We're going to impale them. Like, we're going we're gonna to go have vampire hunting. Uh, all right. So, shoot three magical darts, each dealing to the full force damage. I always hit that. What is force? A magic missile. Uh huh. Force damage. I mean, I can understand thunder damage, but what is force damage? And uh, why do I not get any information on the kind of uh, damage that we do? Anyway, Chromatica, a hurl sphere that deals damage and possibly creates a surface on impact. Alternatively, choose a different tower damage. It creates a surface. Okay, now I understand that. And of course, the class feature. You gain two s two level one spell slots, which are restored on a long rest. Yeah, the class feature, this one here, gives you two spells. The bard has four spells. Also same class feature. Why does the bard gain four spells instead of two? Where is he getting the additional spells from? That's a weird bit that I don't quite understand. Charisma. Uh, force of personality improves spell casting for bards, paladins. Da -da 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 -da. Improves spell casting. So does that also interfere with any other stuff? The high elf cantrip has nothing to do with that either. So, that would mean that if we lower Charisma, then we should not do anything. Okay, uh, use Recommended. Interesting. Also makes uh, selecting things a little bit easier. Anyway, we were in Sorcerer. Let's check the can trips. Um, they're kind of this... There are some similarities in here, but there's no magic hand on the Sorcerer. So, they do different kind of things. Let's see, change your cantrip selection, da 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 da. Uh, cantrips don't use spell slots. Okay, we cast at will. There's the blade ward that we got from before. The acid splash, which of course splashes acid. A bubble of acid, which can be only saved with dexterity. Create a spectral. Oh no, there is the spectral hand. I'm just not blind. <laughs> Project the puff of noxious gas. Uh huh. And then gain advantage on your next attack roll. Sure. Gain advantage on charisma checks. Okay, yeah, we got that one, we got that one, we got the dancing light as well. Ah, uh, the fireball, there we go. You already know this spell, what? Oh, oh, okay. The spell is a different version of one you already know. Uh, you will have access to both. Ooh. Fireball, 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 fireball. Um, so wait a minute, if I get access to both, how would that work? Because there's the High Elf cantrip, that is also the um, the selected one, is the Firebolt. Herald of Motor Fire, 1d10 with intelligence. Um, as the spellcasting ability. Whereas this one here doesn't seem to have any ability that boosts it. Very interesting. But the same kind of damage. Also 18 meters. So that one uses an action. Uh, that one also uses an action. I don't quite know how to understand that one, but okay. So, uh, let's see what else we got. We got light. If you use an object with the... Uh, no, we know this one. Ray of Frost. Reduces the target's movement speed by 3 meters. So there's the movement speed increase, 3 meters, and then there's the same with the decrease. So you can cancel it out a little bit, and you end up with the same amount of speed. If it adds or subtracts the same. Mm, the target cannot use reaction. The ability to then uh, don't take a certain spell. Sort of, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So sorcerer scale with charisma. That's something that I did not quite understand, actually, right? Sorcerers. Because they have a natural... Uh, 
inclination for like words and stuff. Okay. So yeah, what was I? Uh, the target cannot use reactions. The spell has advantage on creatures with mental armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mental, mental armor. And of course the illusion and the bone shell. Prevent the target from healing until your next turn. And under target re receives disadvantage on attack rolls. Oh. The good old disadvantage. Switch it to. What you could do is just take an awful lot of damage uh, over there. And just spam cantrips at the enemy. <laughs> Cantrip this, cantrip that. I don't even know how often you can use a cantrip, right? Uh, your primary resource, da 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 da, recharge once per turn. Yeah, the action recharges, but uh, how often can you use a cantrip in one turn? That's something that I don't quite know yet. Okay, I have to play the game for that to figure, <laughs> figure that out. And choose the spell you know from the list below. Spells require slots to use unless uh, feature states otherwise, yes. Why did I get more spells with the with Bard? That is so weird. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what do I get here? Each flammable target is hit with... S each flammable target. Aha. Uh -huh. With fire. Targets still take half damage if they save themselves. Charm a humanoid. Yeah, same thing. You gain advantage on them. And uh saving throws against being charmed, yeah. So what's this one? The chromatic orb with the surface effect? That's something interesting. Uh, blind creatures up to a combined thirty-three hit points. Hmm. Has this advantage on attack rolls? Okay, so they can still attack. Attack rolls against blinded creatures have advantage. Uh huh. That's actually kind of cool, but they still can attack. Magical change your uh, disguise. Expeditious retreat. Gain dash immediately and as a bonus action on each of your turns until the spell ends. Yeah. Wait a minute. Dash condition movement is doubled for one turn. And as a Bonus action each turn. Okay, wait a minute. So we gain dash and we can use dash as a bonus action. Okay, now I get it. Until long rest. That's actually kind of interesting. What does dash do, by the way? Uh, cover more distance this turn. Double your movement speed. Ooh. That's good. Not just a plus f for D or something, but plus 12 sometimes. Even. No, plus 9. Possibly poisonous. Uh... No, possibly poison the target. Possibly. What's poison? Uh, suffers disadvantage on attack rolls and ability check. As is poisoned. Uh huh. So it just makes them weaker. Um, but the damage itself is just something separate, it seems. So, shield. When you are about to be hit by an enemy, increase your armor class by 5. You take no damage from magic missiles. That is nice. When you are about to be hit. When you are about to be hit, it says until long rest. Meaning that no matter what, you will always have a shield on or whatever. Actions such as uh, da, 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 responses you can have yeah, to events. Reactions can trigger both during and outside of your turn. Uh, it says it recharges once per turn, but how many reactions can you have? Oh. Very interesting. I have to figure that out though. Anyway, then there's the sleep thing, thunder wave again, and the witch bolt. Link yourself to a target with a bolt of lightning. Deal an additional damage each, each turn by activating it. Ooh, nice. That's a lot of damage. So, this is at least uh, the spells that we got. And then there's, of course, the subclass Wild Magic. What's this? Your powers come from ancient forces of chaos. They churn within you, waiting to be burst free at any time. Tides of Chaos. Activate to gain advantage on your next attack roll. Ability check or saving throw. Increased chance of white magic surge outward. Uh huh. Unruly magic sparks and fizzes through your veins. So, so this each time you cast a spell of level 1 or higher, your magic 
might search and trigger a random magical effect. For barbarians, each time you rage, a random magical effect will trigger. Oh. Okay, so Tides of Chaos is something specific. Wait a minute, for barbarians? They don't seem to have that. Very interesting. What's this one? Violent magic is... So there's Tides of Chaos and then there's Wild Magic. Wild Magic stems from the Force of Chaos. It churns within the sorcerers that wield it, waiting to be burst for the... And Tides of Chaos activates this. Increased chance of a minute search afterwards. Oh, okay. So this is just a passive that can happen. Uh-huh. Once we activate this, it can happen more often. But we still don't know the chance for it. And of course, there is a draconic bloodline. Oh, look at the look at the scales in the face. That's kind of cool. Okay, uh, your veins carry draconic magic, the result of a powerful dragon ancestor. Your hit points maximum increases by one for each sorcerer level. And dragon-like scales cover parts of your skin. When you aren't wearing armor, your base armor class is thirteen. Nice. Uh, how is armor class again calculated? Uh, your armor class, the harder you are to hit. Okay, and uh, Dragon Ancestor, we can select, and with each selection, we got what? Draconic Ancestor Brass, put your... okay. So in this case, we do not get the um, the spell um, that the, 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 the dragons would use. We got some, like, human version-ish of it, it seems. No? Nope. Actually, oh, look at this. As black acid, cover the ground in grease, <laughs> slowing creatures within and possibly making them fall prone. What's a prone? Can't move or take action, bonus actions or reactions, and has disadvantage on strength, dexterity, and so on. Attacks against a prone creature have advantage if they're made within three meters of the creature. A prone creature must spend half its movement speed to stand up. Ah, that's actually kind of cool. So we m let them just fall down. There's the lightning, of course. But what is this fire thingy? Burning hands. Oh, I remember that spell. Looked a little bit different, but it's actually kind of cool. Only problem is, I think you have to get really close to your target. So... Let's see. There's the lightning, there's the cold. Gain temporary hit points. A deal five cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack. That's nice. Then we got the poison. Hmm. And then there's the gold thingy, magically change all aspects of your parents. Do we just get this as an additional slot? So we get this as a spell, yes. Uh, but how does the overall uh, setup look like? That's the question that I have a little bit. Whatever. Um, so, what is this one here? The cloud blinds and heavily obscures creatures within it. Cold is... Oh, immunity to falling damage. Oh, nice. So, you can use a sorcerer or you can use a bard. Um, you can have kind of like similar spells uh, and cantrips to use. The variety changes, of course. Uh, but in this case, it's just do you want more weapons or do you want more other stuff? But it's still kind of funny that the light crossbow is available on the sorcerer. <laughs> Wait, what is Arcana? Recognize magic. Interact with enchanted items. Where does this one come from? This is Acolyte? Skills, insight, and volition. Where is the... I think Arcana comes from other stuff. Huh, interesting. Oh, detect lies, that's good. Inside. Read people in situations. Detect lies. Observe your environment, spot hidden details. Ooh, perception. Hmm, turn on a charm, cracks and control. Oh, this is, this is really good. I really need to figure out how to trigger these skills. Maybe it's just race dependent, who knows. And this fire, for some reason, makes you sleepy. That makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. All right. So let's just change the... Wait a minute. Uh, high elf cantrip. No, there's no high elf cantrip anymore. 
Now we got stealth. Oh, so the wood elves are more stealthy. Very cool. That one changed. Yeah. That's really interesting. Arcane, religious insight. Stealth, arcane, religion insight. Perception, persuasion. Perception, persuasion. Okay, so this seems to be more like an innate elf ability. Arcane, religion, insight, persuasion. Yeah. Persuasion, but they have perception. Tieflings don't perceive as well, it seems. And that one has rapier's hand, crossbow. Ah, there we go. Light crossbow. Wait a minute. Hmm. Maybe I should go with a draw, though. But I have to figure out which one I'm going to go for. Like, I do want to get, like, uh, crossbows, just in case. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to use, like, a few spells and so on. That would be kind of funny. So, now, what was I? Mm, storm sorcery, yes. Whether crackling with the energy of ancient deluge or pierced by gales and hurricanes, your lineage is a strange tapestry scrawled by a tempest. After you cast a level 1 spell or higher, any spell basically, other than cantrip, you can fly as a bonus action until the end of your turn without receiving opportunity attacks. What's that one? An automatic attack against an enemy moving out of reach. Oh. Out of reach, so you can get into reach, but not out of reach. Uh -huh. So, basically meaning uh, if you turn your back to the enemy because you're running away, they attack you. The first... Um, yeah, first moment that they can. Okay. Now, then there's also clerics, obviously. They get three cantrips because two is not enough. No. They got four, they got three. That's decent. So, clerics are representatives of the gods. They worship wielding potent divine magic for good or ill. Resistance. Make a target more resistant to spell effects and conditions. It receives a 1d4 bonus to saving throws. Hmm. And there's guidance. Yeah, we are actually getting into that. But class feature, that's the thing that we need to read. So, uh, you gain two level one spell slots, uh, which are restored on long rest. But it... Why does this one have prepare spells and not... Wait, 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 something's weird. This one has spells. This one has prepare spells. That's really weird. And now we have five spells already select. That makes no sense. Okay, there are prepared spells. Where do I get the other spell from? I have five of them. And here are four of them. So there's an additional spell that I get from somewhere. Could be one of those. Life domain spells. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. You already know the spells. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we're definitely going to read into that. Um, but what is this? Domain spells. You gain spells from your domain. They are always prepared. Oh. Okay. So, guiding bold and all of the other stuff. Let's just check all of that. You got, of course, Thermaturgy, gain advantage on intimidation and performance checks. Flame like radiance, a target gains uh, ability checks. Okay, yeah, bonus to ability checks. Make a target more resistant to spell effects and conditions. It receives bonus to saving flowers. Okay, everything in here is basically. No, this could be used for offense with a guidance. This is more like defense, and this is just damage. Yeah, Radiant Flame Bag Jump. Good. Infuse an object with lights. Take only half the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. And a flame in your hand uh, is there to be thrown uh, or to light up things. Interesting. Let's see. Life Domain. How does that work? We got all different life domains. Interesting. The life domain is an aspect of many good deities offering spells that protect restore and restore the mind body and soul ah the explanation of the life domain so there's always this one and this one selected it seems the cure wounds the spell is a better version of one you already know you will only have access to this one 
because it's a better version. How is it better? Because this one is a plus three. Where is the other healing coming from? Where did I... There's supposed to be a healing spell. Healing word. 1d4 plus 3. 1d8 plus 3. Cures. Hmm. You already know this spell. This spell is a better version of a... Why? Where does it come from? I don't know where this spell comes from. This spell is a better version of one you already know. You will only have access to this one. Strange. Okay, so that one heals. Makes sense. And... Uh, again, da 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 da. Bonus to attack and saving throws. Oh, this is cool. You're just getting better all over. Your devotion empowers your healing spells. And casting a healing spell, the target regains additional hit points. Equal to 2 plus the spells level. Nice. Okay, having a cleric in your team might be really good. Mm. And then the scroll of the light domain. Yeah, if you have the light, uh, the life domain or light domain, what does this one do? The light domain is offered by deities of justice, majesty, and primordial flame. Oh, we can also select the deity associated with it. The thing is, we only have Lolf, right? So, where was I? I uh, did that. Justice, Majesty, and Primordial Flame. Providing spells that dispel darkness and harm the undead. Harm the undead. Uh huh. There's light. There's the fairy fire again. Interesting subclass. Shield yourself with divine light. Use a reaction to impose disadvantage on an attacker, possibly causing their attacks to miss. Possibly. And trickery domain. That's an interesting cleric. A domain shared by wicked, chaotic, and mischievous de deities alike. Those who channel trickery uh, specialize in deception and illusion magic. Grant another creature advantage on stealth checks. Interesting. So a trickery uh, domain cleric and the rogue might be best friends. So... What else we got here? Tricky read the main spells. Uh, charm a humanoid to prevent it from attacking you. Yeah, it's that one. And uh, that one here. Yeah. So the first spells are always kind of the same. And knowledge domain. Adaptable and adroit in all manner of language and skills. Your mind is an intellectual cup brimming with exquisite knowing. The command. Command a creature to flee, move closer, freeze, drop to the ground, or drop its weapon. Wow. That's always prepared, right? Wait a minute. It's supposed to be a spell, meaning that, um... What does it mean? Clerics, druids, paladins, and wizards must prepare spells before they can use them. Doesn't count towards your maximum prepared spell. Yeah. It's always prepared, meaning that it's always ready, but it's not a cantrip, meaning that we cannot use it multiple times. We have to wait. Uh, until it gets charged again. I suppose better version of one that you already. What? Why does it say this all the time? That makes no sense. Where? How do I know the another one? Put creature into a magic slumber. Okay, so we can turn them to sleep, or we can command them. The commanding ability. That's kind of like a Jedi kind of thing. So nature domain. What's this one? Oh, we got cantrips even. Nice. Yes, uh, the you embody the vast viridian power of the natural world, an avatar of the subtle divinity of fruitful avian migration, a woodland silence, and the landslides roaring fury. Yeah, there's one out of one cantrip, and that is this one. So we can either poison them, we can flame them, or we get shillelagh. Your stuff or club becomes magical. It deals bludgeoning damage and uses your spell casting ability for attack rolls. Nice. But for how long? Ten turns. Fairly long. And a thorn whip. Ooh, puts a creature three meters closer to you. Uh -huh. And if it's huge, doesn't work. Uh, but do we pull ourselves towards them, at least? Who knows? Okay, and we got two more spells in here. 
We got the uh, speak with animals thing. Make sure because domain nature and animal friendship. Same thing. But if the animal is too intelligent, it doesn't seem to work. Act light of nature. You learn a druid cantrip and become proficient in animal handling. What's animal handling? Influence animals. Uh, pet all of the dogs. Uh huh. Interesting. Oh yeah, and survival. Stay alive in the wilds. Trek. What is the first thing? What what does it mean if we stay alive in the wilds? Like, do we lose health? That's really weird. Okay, and then we got of course the tempest domain. Your faith has made you the very thunder that wakes the black firmament. Lightning cursing through the winds of a terrible storm. Yeah, that's of course the fogging cloud and the thunder wave. But rather storm. Strike back at an attacking creature. Potentially dealing to the 16 lightning damage. On a failed saving throw, you deal half uh, of a da -da -da as thunder damage. Okay. Interesting. So either we do lightning or we do thunder. That's nice. Tempest Domain. It seems to be like a permanent passive. Tempest Domain seems to be a very interesting way of playing. And there's of course War Domain. Fortified by Holy Zeal, you brandish an Oslo of Sacramental Savagery to use against those you deem unrighteous. Your weapon attacks deal an additional radiant uh, damage. Okay. And of course we got the Shield of Faith, which is always present. And uh, it's pretty good. Makes you more tanky. And when you make an unarmed or weapon attack, you can spend a War Priest charge to make an additional attack as a bonus action. Subclass feature War Priest charge. Now that one is new. You can spend a War Priest charge. Where do I get War Priest charges from? Ah, this is where the spell is. Alright. Hmm. Limited selection of spells at a time. Select which spells you have prepared from the total list, you know. Spells must be prepared outside of combat, sure. So, there's protection from good and evil. Hmm, target can't be charmed, frightened or whatever, okay. So it's a CC save, uh, secretary. You or an ally cannot be targeted until you attack or harm a creature. Nice. You can still take damage from area spells. Hoo hoo hoo. Until the... If, until you attack or harm a creature. What if we attack or harm others by using area effects? Does that can count as an attack that we perform? Or is this just a coincidence? <laughs> that would be a nice way. Hmm... Wait a minute. It cannot be targeted by enemy attacks. However, it can still take damage from spells that influence a larger area. There we got it. The affected entity attacks or harms another creature. It cannot be targeted by enemy attack. Nice. However, it can still take damage from spells that influence a larger area. AOE is your friend for this. You can save yourself and deal damage to the enemy and everything is right everything is okay that's cool mm. yes command bless cure wounds cure and healing wounds what's the difference one is better basically okay and they got of course this stuff here uh, inflict wounds putrefy a creature with a necrotic energy filling your hands Call forth rain or destroy a water based surface. Des create or destroy water. Uh huh. A water based surface. Does that mean that we can destroy the ocean? What is supposed to be a water based surface? I mean, river. Oh no, it's probably like combat surfaces. So, like um, a puddle of water, right? Wet floor. Something like that. I think too much about like, yeah, 
already think too far too great with that. Would be funny though. So then, um, yeah, the background's definitely something for another time. Let's continue with the classes though. And that's of course Paladin, like Cleric, but paladin -y. Fueled by the oath you swore to uphold justice and righteousness, you are be beacon of hope in dark times. Lay on hands. Nice healing. Use your blessed touch to heal the creature. Action. So it's not a spell, it's an action. How often can we use this? Lay on hands charges. Once per long rest. Uh huh. Use to cast lay on hands. So there are charges for lay on hands somehow. The question is how many times can we use these charges? Where? Where is that depicted? Mm. You gain the ability to channel the power contained in your paladin of which you can use to fuel certain actions. Ah, replenished by short or long rest. Channel of charges one. Huh. Gain advantage on attack rolls against celestial fiends and undead. And there's a subclass, the oath that we can select. Oath of Ancients. That's the... No, okay, that's a different thing. Uh, you fight on the side of light in the cosmic struggle against darkness to preserve the sanctity of life and the beauty of nature. So, there's more healing. Uh, yourself and allies for 5 hit points. Regain another 5 next turn. That's cool. Channel Oath Charge. The number of times you can draw upon the strength of your da 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 da. Recharge on short run. Okay, so there's a Channel Oath Charge? Or is it the same charge that we are talking about? Oath of the Ancients Tenets. Oath of the Ancients Paladinified by the following tenets. Kin. Kindle, uh, kindle the light through acts of kindness and kindle the light of hope in the bleakest hollows of despair. Shelter the light where our love blossoms stand against the devilry that would snip its stem. Preserve your own light. The light in culture and small joy is to preserve the light in your own heart. Wait a minute. Does that mean that we have to do this in order to keep our uh, healing spells active? That's actually an interesting recommendation. Like, Requirement. Oath of a devotion. Following the ideal of the knight in shining armor, you act with honor and virtue to protect the weak and pursue the great good. Uh, grant an ally a vengeful aura that deals. Isn't vengeance over here, but anyway. Uh, that deals damage to anyone who hits them with a melee attack. Another channel oath charge. Mm. Oath of devotion turns. Oath of Devotion, Paladins, abide by the following tenets. Courage, stride dauntlessly into action. However this is supposed to, to work. Compassion, show clemency when prudent and lend your arm to those in need. Duty, tend your responsibilities, obey just laws and support those entrusted to your care. And then there's of course the Vengeance one. And look at how the our outfit changes slightly, that's pretty interesting. You have set aside even your own purity to right wrongs and deliver justice to those who have committed the most grievous sins. You, own allies' weapons, attacks, deal an additional two radiant damage and can daze enemies for a turn. And in order to do this, uh, we have to fight the greater evil, exerting your wisdom, identify the higher morality in any given instance, and fight for it. No mercy for the wicked, chasing those who dole out their villainy by wiping their blight from the world forever. Dude, that's a very aggressive paladin. So, what else we got? We got the warlock. Interesting. Bound by a pact. To an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. Unique magic. You gain warlock spell slots. Aha, uh -huh. that's what you get. Not just spell slots, warlock spell slots. So, first we are going to check the cantrips again, which are kind of similar, but there's something new here. The Eldritch Blast. That's crackling false energy. 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. And final illusion. Da, 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 da. Nothing in here seems to... Yeah, it's just a cantrip. It's a normal action. It works all the time. Huh. So, it's, of course, it's a charisma kind of thing. And the spells that we can select are the what now? Armor of the Agathis. Gain temporary hit points and deal cold damage. Yeah, we got that one. But in Frost for the Sorcerer. Can only have temporary da 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 da. And everyone. Uh huh, Warlock Spell Slot. And targets still take half damage but are able to use reactions. Uh -huh. Then there's the Burning Hands. Charm Person Command. Expeditious Retreat. Gain dash and run off. There's the hellish rebuke. The fire finger. React to your next attacker with flames. The deal damage. Of a lot of damage. Target still takes half damage, which is still a lot. This ability here is actually pretty, 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 pretty cool. Spell, but still cool. A hex. Make your attacks deal an additional necrotic damage to the target and give it disadvantage on an ability of your choosing. If the target dies before the spell ends, you can hex a new creature without expending a spell slot. Meaning that this should be the spell used before actually killing a target, or maybe even to kill the target. Or at least kill it with the next action that you do. Mm, protection from evil and good. Not good and evil, but evil and good. Protect an ally against the attacks and powers of aberration. Celestial elements, fey, fiends, and undead. The target can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. And when these creatures attack it, they have disadvantage. And of course, the witch's bolt, which does steal lightning, are uh, shown by activating it. Hmm. For ten turns, that's pretty sweet. So, what's this one, though? That was the necrotic thing. Prevents targets from using reactions. Uh-huh. That's pretty neat. But what does the fiend do? Ah, it gives you specific spells from the get-go. Very nice. Warlocks in service to fiends work towards corrupting destructive ends. Intentionally or otherwise. And receive hellish blessings in turn. Uh, it's not a blessing, it's more like uh, spells. The Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, this gift from your patron grants you four temporary hit points. Nice. But can it stack though? The Great Old One. Okay. You do get additional... Like these... Spells were here before, like you can actually change it. Wait a minute. Yeah, I know that that's kind of weird. Like you can change these spells over here, and then they're in the subclass over there. That makes no sense. They're just pre selected if you s use this subclass here, but you can still change them again. Anyway, frightening a creature it will be easy to hit and cannot move. So, how does frighten work again? Mm, cannot move. Frightened entities also have disadvantage. Okay. They're like... They're always additional... Um, effects on the enemy, right? They do basically the same thing with the whole uh, advantage or disadvantage kind of stuff. But the fact that they have different names kind of complicates things. So, mortal reminder. When you land a critical hit against a creature... A creature and any nearby enemies must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened till the end of the next turn. The warlocks bound to eldritch beings in the fed realm work towards inscrutable goals, gaining strange powers over entropy and the mind. Hmm. And there's of course the Arch Fae. Graced by a lady or lord of the Fae, you are imbued with all the sumptuous and scary qualities of your patron's extraordinary realm. We get fame magic. Ah, uh, sweet. The fact that you can make un invisible, invisible enemies visible is pretty cool. Fey presence. Charm of frighten nearby foes with the fey wilds beguiling and uh, disturbing magic. Hmm. They can't attack spellcaster. Spellcaster has advantage on this magic. That is pretty good. It says charm or frighten. 
How does that work though? Because it kind of does the same thing. Frightened enemies also have disadvantage on uh, the stuff and spellcaster has advantage. Oh. On charisma checks and dialogue. Ah. Dialogue. Alright. And of, of course the stuff here. But we don't really care about that because we are going for the next uh, class. Let's see what this one is. Druids channel the elemental forces of nature. And, uh, share deep kinship with animals. Mastery of wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. But can we select what kind of creatures it is or is it just... Who knows? Anyway, throw a shard of ice that deals piercing damage. Nice, nice. And nice cantrips that we can use all the time. That's actually pretty neat. Thorn whips. You gain two level one spell slots, which are restored on a long rest. Nice. So, cantrip. What do we have? That one kind of looks like a rabbit. Anyway, we got da, 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 da. Uh, resistance. Ah, that damage thing. The get over here whip. There's no, oh wait, uh, there are prepared spells. What's so special about this one? Why, for some reason, can't I? I'm supposed to turn like into into animals, but I don't see any animal spells so far. So what do we have? Uh, ice knife. Throw a shot of ice. It deals damage. Sure. Entangle, hmm. vine surface, slowing down creatures, possibly entangling them. And they can't really move and messes up their dexterity. So, there's of course a folk ride, speak with animals, again, very useful thingy. Animal friendship, sure. Charm person, thunder wave, healing words, cure words, uh, cure wounds, wait, action, bonus action, wait, wait. Interesting, so those are two different healing effects. Fairy fire, yeah, turn invisible and whatnot. Enhanced leap. Triple a creature's jumping distance. And long strider makes me faster as well. Very cool. It could be that you can like, uh, no, wait a minute, this is the druid thing. I wanted to combine this with like other uh, movement speed increases, but that would come from another clause that's not how that works. The good berry. Conjure four magical berries into your or companion's inventory. Creatures who eat a berry regain one to four hit points. Berries disappear after the long rest. Nice. You just gained that. That's pretty sweet. Call forth rain or destroy water surfaces. Fascinating. Yeah, the cantrip is like we can summon a stuff, chill cantrip, whatnot. So, the next one is, of course, uh, the ranger. Oh, no, wait. Something that I completely forgot to look into is the proficiencies uh, of the classes. Clubs, dangers, javelin, mazes, quarterstuffs, scimitars, sickles, and spears. No crossbow, so no druid. Uh, simple weapons, whatever that is supposed to be, and light armor. But no... Wait a minute. Where does this uh, crossbow thingy come in? I think it comes from the draw. From them being draws, yes. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Hmm. So, simple weapon, light armor, sure. Martial weapons, light armor, da 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 da. Oh, heavy armor for the paladin. Kind of expected. That one just medium armor and morning stars though, they are cool. Some of only the clerics have morning stars. Daggers, quarter stars, like crossbows. Hmm. Rapiers are kinda cool. So what do we got? Hand crossbows and uh, Wasn't there like a character that was able to use more than just hand crossbows? Like didn't I? Yeah, light crossbows. The sorcerer for some reason. What's the difference between a hand crossbow and a light crossbow? Which one is heavier? The one in the hand or the light one? Oh. Heavier. Uh, whatever. 
the ranger could probably do more stuff even. Clubs, staggers, javelins, mazes, quarterstaffs, scimitars, sickles, spears. Druids are pretty decent. Um, so, ranger of course. Simple weapons, martial weapons, whatever that means. Like, this is supposed to be a ranger, like a, a, a ranged character. What on earth is a martial weapon? Martial weapon prophecy. Add your proficiency bonus to attack rolls with martial weapons. What on earth are martial weapons? Maybe like uh, long range weapons, like crossbows or so, are in the, this category over here. But I'm actually not quite sure. What is a martial weapon? Uh, So, okay, martial weapons include battle axes, flayers, glaives, great axes, great sword, halberds, lances, long spears, mauls, morning swords, pikes, rapiers, scimitars, sword, sword, tridents, warhammer, war picks, warhammer, whips, blow guns, hand crossbows, heavy crossbows, long bows, and nets. So, um, martial weapons is just a higher category. The problem is it's not told to anyone. Um,. Okay. This is really interesting that there is like another kind of category even. So... Yeah, there are simple weapons and then there are martial weapons. What is a simple weapon? Uh, simple weapons comparison table. Okay, time, melee, da 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 da. I don't want to know the, the the weapon. I want to know what kind of type it is. Okay. There are hand crossbows, there are heavy crossbows, and then there are light crossbows. What is the bloody difference? Okay, so Marshall is a heavy crossbow. Its quality is a two-handed. Okay. Light crossbow is what? It's simple. Uh-huh. So, this is actually something that uh, the game does not quite tell you. What is a, um, what is a simple weapon uh, and what is a martial weapon? Hmm. Or maybe you can get this information somehow else? No. Proficiency bonus with simple weapons. Still doesn't tell you. Saving throw skill, but it is... Uh, figure that out somehow. Okay. Anyway, so martial weapons are, um, let's say, battle-trained weapons, or like, weapons that are more advanced, right? The opposite of simple weapons, basically. Um, and then there are, like, some proficiencies for specific kind of weapons. This is just a group of stuff. Alright, now we know. Unbelievable. Uh, so, ranger, ranger, ranger. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trekkers, honing a deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favorite prey. Gain advantage on your next attack roll. Uh-huh. Two turns. But we have to use this all the time. Fa fiend familiar. Summon a familiar. A fae spirit. It takes an animal form of your choosing. So, there's a favored enemy. Uh -huh. What's so special about that one? Studying the tactics and abilities of certain creatures has granted you a set of abilities that is useful in a variety of situations. A natural explorer. What's this one? Years of traveling in the wild have made you particularly attuned to beasts or adapt at surviving in certain environments. Beast Tamer. You have cultivated a... Ah, okay. Okay, so the first one changes the first thing, uh, and the second one changes the second thing. And this is just a nice overview of the stuff that you haven't selected yet. Uh -huh. So, there's the Bounty Hunter, which does something. You gain proficiency in investigation. Uh, creatures you hit with ensnaring strike 
Either ranged or melee have this advantage on their saving throw. Mm -hmm. Gain and proficiency investigation. How does investigation work? Sometimes you yeah, just want to know what some stuff is, but it's not yet explained. Keeper of the Veil makes you fly. Or oh, what was it? Uh, the target can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by da da da. And the creature attacks it. If there's advantage, uh, no, it's just a protection. I see the wings, and some are expected to be able to fly. Keep off the wire. Magic breaker. The true strike. Okay, that's the range and nine. Wait, the proficiency in arcana even, and cast true strike. Alright, so you have sworn to serve a crown or nation and seek to bring its foes to ruin against proficiency in history. What does history do again? Remember the past of the world and its people, plus one. Uh -huh. Makes sense. Maybe if there are like quests uh, or some kind of backstories needed to understand that, like a language even. So, you swore to hunt the. No, wait a minute. That's also the find a familiar thing. Or like, no first ability. This will hunt the enemies of a holy druidic order. You gain proficiency in religion and can cast sacred flame. Hmm. Interesting. Druid hunters. So natural explorer, the beast tamer. You can cast find f a fiend familiar without expending a spell slot. Ooh, okay. Then there's the urban tracker, which does what? An expert on navigation in the wild within. Uh, the city you gain proficiency in sleight of hand. Ah, wield nimble fingers. Steal stuff. Helps you pick pockets and. No, locks in pockets. And disarm traps. Nice. Wasteland wanderer and cold. Uh, what's this one? You have spent endless days surviving desolate tundras. You gain resistance to cold damage and resistance halves the damage of its type so fire of course same thing resistance to that and resistance to poison okay that is actually nice that you can uh, select that here together with a first cantrip that actually makes the ranger a really decent uh, class maybe you don't even need to overload yourself with spells and cantrips and all of that stuff maybe the ranger is just pretty decent what does dex do? Mm. Balance affects your effectiveness with ranged and finesse weapons, also affects your initiative and armor class. Mm. Questions upon questions. Like, I do want to make the crossbow somewhat valid, but how am I going to do this if I uh, try to play with a different kind of uh, class entirely? Anyway, there's only these classes, but we are going for the wizard. What does the wizard do? What's so special about them? They seem to have the most amount of spells. Not that many cantrips, though. Very interesting. Look at that. Yeah. Four cantrips, meaning that sorcerers are the spell users. But when it comes to variety, it looks like uh, wizards are the better ones. Wizards master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. Hmm. And yeah, wait a minute. Daggers, quarter stuffs, light crossbows. Yes. So, do I want a martial weapon and the uh, crossbow for it? Ah, huh. there's hand crossbows and. This one explicitly says. No, wait a minute. Hand crossbow. But hand crossbows, I think, are also like simple. Uh, it's kind of weird. Light crossbows. Sorcerers, for some reason, are the 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 yeah, kind of like the best mix of everything. Like you can cast, you can use all of the edgy kind of weapons in here. Wait, was it to have the same thing? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Hand crossbows. 
Oh, wait a minute. Hand crossbows could be like the one-handed crossbows, right? Could I maybe dual wield these things? That would be amazing. Dual wielding crossbows and magic. Ooh, that would be so sick. How could I make that work, though? Okay, uh, I have to actually look into this. Uh, hand crossbow. And crossbow BG3. There we go. What is this? Uh, spring locks. Da 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 da. Hand crossbow. Still don't know much about it. Uh, it's one of the martial range. Oh, martial range weapons. So. It's a martial range weapon. But. Oh, it's only 50 meters. It's not much, actually. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Wait a minute. Why does the hand crossbow have different ranges? That's really weird. The wiki is not precise enough. Uh, BG3 dual wielder. Hands crossbow. Does that work? That would be f absolutely, absolutely OP. Uh, so, with medium armor, you do perfectly find your wielding in melee or range. You got to be kidding me, you can do this. Busted. Basically, any class with a means of scaling attacks can be crazy with them. So not to just slap your experts on every single character unless they specifically already have a more optimal build. Nice. Okay. So for some reason, the uh, funny kind of build that I came up with seems to be the most overpowered one. You gotta be kidding me. Intuition. It's called intuition. So what we need is a hand crossbow, another light crossbow. Um. Yeah. Actually, you do need uh, like the uh, wiki open for this, just because you have to understand how the game categorizes things. Um. So, like light crossbows could be two. Yeah, they're two-handed. Uh, that's actually very interesting. So, weapon types that have two-handed darts for some reason, what? Glaives, yeah, all of the uh, normal stuff. Heavy crossbow, light crossbow, but not the hand crossbow. What is about the heavy crossbow, though? I mean, 1d10-ish, okay. Uh, what about the light crossbow? It's like 1d8. Um, no, what about the... Hand crossbow. What about that damage? 1d6. Okay, so if you dual wield it, it's a 2d6. So you can get a maximum. It's actually like 2 to 12, which is, if you think about it, better than uh, having a heavy crossbow because this is 1d6, 1d10. That's actually really interesting. Holy crap, these things are overpowered. They may just uh, burst through your uh, ammunition very quickly, so that's something to keep in mind. All right, where was I? Wizard. Um, they master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic. Combining ancient spells with modern research. Yeah, we got that. Uh, two level one spells, which are restored on a long rest. Hmm. Mm. But we got six spells for some reason. Uh, prepared for. They just got two. And then we can prepare a few more. Uh huh. For some. I don't quite know how this is scales, right? Because we have four spells and then another two. Yeah. <laughs> How oh, is that supposed to be understood? Okay, the cantrips are of course the same as with uh, other classes. But the nice thing is the mage hand. But wh wh what are the abilities that I actually thought of as uh, kind of funny, right? Uh, the mage hand, kind of like a funny spell that I wanted to use. Um, the the crossbows, dual wielding. <laughs> 
Um, so something really funny that I wanted to use. Um, then it looks like rogue uh, or... Yeah, rogue or bard are the... Uh, the classes that I'm going to use here at the moment. The thing is, I really, 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 really love nice magic classes. I just... Oh, the variety is just amazing. That's actually the thing that I like about classes most of the time. If they are too simple, then... Mm -hmm. But if there's a little bit of variety with the with the spells and you always unlock new things, this is the thing that kind of keeps me going. Give me a nice ability that I can unlock and I'm good. So, now, where was I? Um... This is an awful lot of spells, and like, this is just so cool. You have a huge spell book, and you're like, okay, I've got to pick with this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and then you put some cantrips on, and then you're good. I just love that. Oh, false life, what's that one? Gain seven temporary hit points. Need. Until long rest, cool. Can only have temporary hit points from one source, yes. Okay. So you really cannot supercharge yourself. Expeditious retreat. Yeah, and that is another kind of thing that I like. Okay. So... That is kind of cool. What is this? Color spray. Oh, yes. And then there's the chromatic orb again. Needy. The grease could be such a funny thing. Like, you just make the enemy fall to the floor. Feather fall. Also kind of neat. Like, all of the... the Actually, the most interesting abilities that I like to use are not the ones that deal the most amount of damage, but they uh, the ones that have some kind of variety in them. Like, uh, variety. Utility in them. Like the immunity to fall damage, for example. Movement speed boosters. Jump increases, or something like that. That is actually the stuff that I like. Anyway, mage armor. Protect a target from attacks. Increase its armor class to 13 plus its dexterity modifier. Interesting. And why not something else? Why does it have to be dexterity? And of course the charm person again. Uh, oh, rare sickness. So then of course another shield when you are about to be hit by an enemy. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that kind of like the, 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 uh, the ice shield? Could be. Hmm. Okay, this is basically the level 1 uh, spells, all of them. <laughs> so, but what about the cantrips? Yeah, we... Uh, I said that I know them already. Ah, no, I get it. No, I get it. So, these spells here, if you really look at them, uh, they are more of the utility variety or some high damage spells, like 216, for example, right? That's high damage. This is also high damage. So, spells are high damage utility because you are supposed to use them as a utility so once every now and then, right? Um, or like for, for, for very special situations and then you have this uh, extreme amount of damage in order to well, do an awful lot of damage uh, in certain situations. This is much higher than for example a cantrip with 1d10 or just a 1d8. That's much less, right? So these are your normal damaging abilities. And then there are your uh, I want to kill a boss kind of abilities. You want to keep them a little bit. This is what the difference is. Okay, now I understand it. And uh, so for the constant kind of damage, cantrips are the way to go. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, mage hand. Uh, I just want to use that. Mage hand. You could trigger so much with that. So funny, Jesus. It would be such a stupid class to play, but... Yeah, we are going for the stupidest class to, uh, to come up with. Alright. Uh, let's see. What could that be? I mean, the... Uh, was done on all about simple weapons? Nah, there could be anything. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. The hand crossbow? Oh, my, wait a minute. Uh, who of them got dual wheel? Or do you do you even need dual wheel for this? Don't think so. 
This one has a sleight of hand. Where's the sleight of hand coming from? Uh, where's the sleight of hand coming from? That's actually weird. It's really weird. That might just be an innate rogue kind of thing. Yeah. You do not know where it comes from. That's really weird. Anyway, what's this one? Arcane recovery. Replenish spell slots while out of combat. You cannot restore spell slots above fifth level. Oh! Oh, this is cool. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, so actually wizards might be even cooler. And nicer than sorcerers. Why is it that... Ah, now I get it. Okay, so sorcerers have more cantrips. And wizard has less cantrips to use. Okay, now we get it. Okay, wait a minute. What's a hands crossbow again? Uh, and who can duel wield? BG free, who can duel wield? Okay, how to duel wield? Da 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 da. Um, duel wielder, yes, this one. Okay, you can use two weapon fighting, even if your weapons aren't light and you gain a plus one bonus to armor class. By wielding it, da 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 da. Who can get this? Requirements. All classes level four. Oh, nice. Aren't light and you gain plus one bonus to armor class. By wielding a melee weapon in each hand, you cannot do wield heavy weapons. Oh, okay. So that's not going to work. Makes sense. Uh, mainly for characters that are dual wielding using their strength rather than dexterity. What? If you're a dex character and you're dual wielding, you'd just be better off taking dexterity here to gain the plus uh, one armor class. Plus one attack, plus one damage. Uh huh. Interesting. So, wait a minute. Um, what I need... Um, it's not two weapon fighting. It's a class passive. Da -da 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 -da. Provide unique abilities. When you make an attack with your offhand weapon, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the attack fighter ranger and college of swords what's this one uh -huh. however i get this one um i actually do you cannot do wield heavy weapons okay oh, bollocks come on i do need equipment weapons and I need to figure out what the hand crossbows were again. Uh, well they are ranged weapons, sure. <laughs> uh, but there's wait a minute there are light crossbows. Light crossbows are simple proficiencies. Okay. Then there are heavy crossbows that they are martial proficiency, sure. And then there are hand crossbow. No, wait, what? No, the martial ones. But what is that? What are. He and heavy crossbows, also martial. Two handed range weapons? No. So, do we think that the turn can be done with any two weapons that have the light quality? Which you can check by holding the cursor over them in the inventory. Good, no. Light quality. Ah, there we got it. 
It's a different uh, stat in here. So there's martial, there's ranged weapons, and then there's something in addition to that. It's called light and loading. Oh, what's loading? Light and loading. What is loading? Loading is a weapon property. Da -da -da -da. Loading grants weapon the ability to be reloaded between shots. Uh, grant different weapon types. Da -da 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 -da. Has to reload in order to be fired again. Oh. Has to reload in order to be fired again. Sure. Great. Um, hmm. So it has to be reloaded. But I could also just use this on the offhand. And use like... Uh, it just as a situational kind of thing. The thing is, I always think about it. Uh, how I would use it in a very overpowered kind of way. But then, I usually never managed to do so because I'm always like, I have to save my consumable items. <laughs> uh, this usually breaks it every single time. So, now let's see. Do we want to go for just spell casting? Because we can use all of these spells. Can I use more of the same spells? No, okay, so you need like stuff like this. Good. Hmm. Interesting. Once per long rest, yes. I mean, I don't quite know how this works. Do you use up a um, the slot? And you have to prepare spells, right? So there are, for example, six prepared spells. And out of all of those six, you can cast them as many times as you want. But only... Uh, two times. Kind of. Hmm... Uh. Because in this case, what you have in here is just... What, what if you like one spell a lot? Do you have to learn them multiple times? Like, how does that work? Uh, crap. This is something that you have to figure out again. You got to be kidding me. All right. Anyway. This arcane recovery is just a really, really, really nice passive. But anyway, anyone can can use this. Um, what did I say it was? Martial, right? Yeah. So we need martial weapons. Like these. Um, they're definitely not simple. Or are they? Crap, I took, completely forgot. Uh, and uh, crossbows. Marshall, yes. Okay. Really, 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 really need that. So, martial damage, or as a specification for it, we need hand crossbows in there. This one also has long swords and rapiers, also kind of funny weapons. Light armor, religious, and deception, performance, and persuasion. Uh. This is actually really, 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 really neat. And then we could read, uh, could get rid of this one and get magic hand in there as a cantrip, uh, and maybe even. Yeah, what else could we get? Vicious Mockery? Nah, not really. Friend definitely helps. Uh, hmm. Against a non hostile character. Aura of Light is very useful. The illusion thingy could work. Okay, what about the rogue? The sleight of hand and the stealth thing, that is just so sweet. Hmm. 
then there's of course sneak attack. Like sneak attack stuff is pretty, pretty, pretty neat. Put old hand crossbows, but we don't get other stuff. So what I need for them, like the magic has to come from other sources. So I need to play like an elf or something like that. What about this? Halflings don't get shit. Okay. Oh, they have. Uh, they got the lucky stuff. Um. Then we got like high elf. Cantrip. So I could use the rays as a cantrip selection to at least get some uh, magical properties in there. Then I could use that instead. Interesting, interesting, interesting. What about that one, though? It's really funny that... No, wait a minute. The cantrips of the cleric are not as general as I thought. And the... Oh, okay. There are an awful lot of different uh, deities in here. But they don't seem to change too much. It's just like... What name of God... Uh, you pray to. Okay. The domain itself. That's actually the thing that's more important. Hmm. Okay. When you say grant another creature advantage, can you be this other creature? That would be kind of funny. <laughs> the draw though the cantrips of the draw okay same thing the bar seems to be the way to go and spy an ally to add a one to their next attack uh, it's not permanent though So we could use some spells. We could also talk to animals, and animal talking is absolutely vital uh, in this game because you miss out on so much if you don't have it. Hmm. But I'm not alone in this game, right? There are other characters that could help me out. I don't need to be the... Uh... Yeah, someone who does it all. That's just it. Nice thing about it is that it does recharge. Only problem is we have only light crossbows. Hmm. And light cross. Now wait a minute. What's light crossbow? We could still use crossbows. I mean, hmm? uh, but it was two-handed, wasn't it? Um. Light crossbow. Two-handed, yes. Uh, hmm. I mean, it doesn't quite matter. That's the thing. And it doesn't seem to need the reloading thing. Wait a minute, what? That's actually very interesting. Okay, so I don't need to dual wield them. Hmm. But I could still try to use the crossbow as a crossbow kind of thing. <sighs> ah, crap. Okay, so, wait a minute. Mm. We could play the wizard in a very, very strange way. We may not need the bard. We could use it like that. So I could use the cantrip and the movement speed and all of the other stuff. So we still got our intelligence over here. Memory and mental power robbers. Da da da. Improved spellcasting for wizards. Ah, uh, bards, paladins, also this. Da 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 da. Only problem is not that much charisma, but we can just have another like bard, charisma, whatever kind of character, and they could do the whole trading business for me, right? We don't need to do all of it. But for some reason, the wizard and the whole arcane recovery kind of thing is just so, so nice. Mm. Ugh, unbelievable. 
Unbloody believable. Why does it have to be so good? Anyway. What's so special about this? The spell is a different version of one you already know. You will have access to both. Uh, you. I would like the magic hand. Light is also some kind of nice utility. But the spells themselves... Didn't I see this expeditious retreat somewhere on a, on a class? Could be the... No, uh, not that one. Uh, no. There, there's Long Strider. That's the thing. The Bard has Long Strider. Does the uh, wizard also have long strider? Yes. And then there's this one here. Gain dash immunity. Uh, and there's a bonus action on each of your turns until the spell ends. Until long rest and one turn. Gain dash and there's a bonus. What was this dash all about again? Totally forgot. Doubles your movement speed. One turn. So what happens? It's also concentration. All right, that one's not concentration. Could you maybe use expeditious retreat and long strider at the same time in order to supercharge the speed? That would be funny. I would not use. Yeah, I would just not use spells uh, as a damaging kind of form. I would just go like speed buffs and so on. <laughs> that would be so so iffy. Yeah, we we are going to play the wizard, but not as a wizard, but more like a rogue. So let's just get uh, rid of all of the spells in here. We are going to use disguise self, uh, so that we look like someone else. Then we are going for the expeditious retreat. A nice concentration thing, but that's kind of... What is the bonus action again? The secondary resource in combat. Uh, recharge once per turn. Mm. Movement speed is doubled for one turn. Dash available as a bonus action. Until long rest. Until long rest, yes. Gain dash immediately and as a bonus action on each of your turns until the spell ends. But this spell ends never. They can... Uh, caster needs to focus on maintaining the spell, because where they maintain. They can only cast one concentration per time, and their concentration might be broken when they take damage. Okay, so that's just the thing. Um, but as long as we do not take damage, we can run as fast as we want. Um, so that means that I need to play the wizard, and then I also need a race that is like faster than all of the others, so that I can get even more movement speed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you got the need? <laughs> the need for speed. Um, and then I also need like fall damage so that I can just reposition myself extremely well. And then I could just try to backstep them like mad. Uh, yeah, I don't need like uh, daggers or anything. And I don't need to dual wield crossbows. I could just use the normal crossbow that should be enough. Because the normal crossbow does not have the reloading thing in it. Which means I can, um, well, yeah, use it without reloading. Uh, so, what does it say? Character need to master certain proficiency before using a weapon and sometimes gain a special action while holding it. Uh, light crossbow, two-handed, piercing shots, proficiency, unlocks, piercing shot. So, crossbow, hand crossbow. Let's just look at that again. Yeah, it has the qualities of loading. Interesting. So, curry. Okay. 
It doesn't say that it has loading on it. Weapon. And it's, huh, it only has like 15 meters. Interesting. By type. Ranged weapons. There we go. Martial range weapons, there's like... Uh-huh. That is weird. Why is the hands crossbow? Uh, wait a minute. Martial ranged, simple... Versatile? No. Simple two-handed range weapons. There you go. There's some crossbows. Two-handed. Sure, 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 sure. And then there are simple... Martial two-handed range weapons. Yeah, what about those? Crossbows. Nothing in there needs to be... Different. Yeah, martial. And then there's martial ranged weapons. Okay. Weird. Light crossbows really don't need to be reloaded. Light crossbow reloader. BG3. How does that work? Crossbows are stronger, but normally. Da 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 da. Of crossbow is martial class, extra attack properties gives penalty for crossbow, and you can only attack one time and not two. Oh, okay. So, not a bug, it's not Elliot. The fact that the property loading exists means Larry intends to build out that restriction. Oh! It would be weird if they didn't. Crossbow would entirely beat out any other type of range weapon. Uh huh. And I have brought to uh, with a light crossbow, but not martial weapons don't get extra attack anyway. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, uh, we definitely go for the wizard. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, so yeah, we need to disguise ourselves. We need to retreat a lot. We need to use the long strider just because. Uh, triple the creature's jump distance, yes. For some reason it's also melee. And what else we got? We could get a familiar, but maybe we don't need necessarily do that. It would be nice to have a, like a, a save uh, for your characters that you create. Just so you uh, don't need to recreate them. So, what else we do? Uh, we go for Feather. Like, look at all of that. It's like bluish-white. You and nearby allies gain immunity to falling damage. Sure. Now, what else do I need? Um, there's nice dexterity in there. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. I have to... All of these abilities, look at this. They don't scale with anything. <laughs> because um, they work differently. Memory and mental power. Improve spell casting for wizards. Improve spell casting. It says it generally, but uh, does it mean the class gets better with it? Or does it mean that usually it gets better with it? Right? Because we are basically uh, wild carding everything. Ice knife? No, we don't need that. Uh, I need another utility thing in here. Cantrips I can use for damage, but not this stuff. Shoot free magical, da 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 da, break the tower from attacks, no. Uh, damage, thunder wave, uh, the laughter, 
Put a creature into magic slumber. The shield. Oh yeah, the shield. When you're about to be hit by an uh, attack, that's a nice reaction. That could be useful. Protection from good and evil. Protect an ally against the attacks and powers of aberration. Celestial land. Da 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 da. Can't be jumped, frightened. Ba 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 ba. No. What did I say? It was kind of funny. The grease, right? <laughs> Chromatic. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Chromatic orb might be something very nice. Because of the surface effect. And surface always stays there. And that's good. Nothing in here seems to have a... I don't know why nothing in here says intelligence. Maybe because... Yeah, maybe because this is just how that scales. Wait a minute. Let me just go to this one right here. Oh. Um, can we change our primary? No. Oh, skill proficiencies. Ah, that's where we get that. Interesting. Assign. Uh, plus... Wait, what? Bonus one. Okay. So you can only get plus two. Or plus one. That's very interesting. Okay. Hmm. Your proficiency bonus is added to two ability checks and saving flowers against skill. You are proficient in. Against skill, you are proficient in. Making them more likely to succeed uh, is also added to. Proficiency bonus. Then it scales with different stuff here. Hmm. Affects your effectiveness with ranged and finesse weapons. Also affects your initiative and armor class. Yes. Memory and mental power. Improves spell casting for wizards. Yes. Improves the spell casting. But I still do need a bit dexterity and constitution. I would say. The problem is that senses and intuition I don't have, and that would kind of be very helpful. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, what if I go with like basic intelligence? Uh, boy. Okay, like what could I get? Yeah, more. The thing is, this is just gain 7 temporary thing. Yeah. Sounds a bit off. Blind creature. Okay. So either we put them to sleep, or we shield ourselves, or others, or like do... Do damaging spells. Fog light. Heavily obscures the... I mean, if I already deal damage, it should deal damage in an interesting way. I would go with a chromatic warp, yeah. Yeah, that pretty much does it. Or Grease. Hmm. It's ten turns. It's actually very long. And then they fall to the ground, which makes it uh, easier for me to attack them, right? So, can't move or take actions. Uh, bonus actions or reactions. And has disadvantage on strength, dexterity, da 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 da. Attacks against a prone creature have advantage da, 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 if they mate within three meters of the creature. Hmm. I spent half its movement speed to stand up. Ah, which means I can move around and they basically don't. And I can reset all of those spells with Lily. It's actually a really good idea. Maybe I'm just going to switch that later on. Um, but yeah, for now we're going to keep the chromatic orb for us. So, we got this stuff done. Um, spell attack. A bonus to melee and ranged spell attacks. Improves your chance to hit with certain spells. Doesn't matter, because all of them are buff spells. Except for this one. But this one will always hit. Because it's a ground. <laughs> hmm... That's the funny thing about it. 
And I can jump anywhere I want. Okay, and cantrips. Uh, yeah, we are going for the mage hands, of course. Let's just... This one first, yes. Mm, second, we could go for, I don't know. Minor illusion, same thing, right? I kind of like that. What if we use uh, our crossbow for damage, but we use anything else uh, for utility, right? If you use an object with an aura of light. Does it do anything else there? No. Only affects one target at a time. And dancing lights we got two. An object with light. Create a spectral hand. Sure, 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 sure. This is damage, 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 blade ward. Take only half the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks two turns. Gain advantage on charisma checks there. I just don't know how... No, wait a minute. Uh, advantage is just... It has a higher chance of working. But you really need to concentrate for that. That's not nice. Um, you pay creatures to investigate. You can remain hidden while casting the spell. The spell can be cast while you are silenced. Hmm. Gain advantage on your next attack roll. That's another concentration thing, but... That basically increases our damage. Always. So, main chance. Yeah, why don't we just go with, like, Minor Illusion, and then I'm gonna go for some light stuff. I don't know what light does. Hmm... That would be so funny. <laughs> That's the most utility kind of character ever. Uh, nothing in here needs a saving throw, except for dex save. Hmm. Yeah. Let's just let's just keep the light stuff in here. The whole friends thing is cool, um, but let's just wait until we actually get a decent character for that. That is the most boring ass kind of wizard anyone could think of, but seems to be the most funny ones too. So, ah, so this is the spell variety that we have, and this is the prepared spells. Okay, and what kind of spells do I need prepared? Uh, and how could I increase the amount of prepared spells later on with higher levels probably? Um, you can only cast from a limited selection of spells at a time. Select which spells you have prepared from the total list of spells you know. So this must be prepared outside of combat. Okay, so I have my spell book. With spells that I know. Um... And this is the prepared spells, uh, the one that I absolutely know of. I don't need this guy's self. Uh, definitely going for the... I'm definitely going for the speed at the beginning. So... We're gonna keep that. And... Uh, yeah, then we are definitely going to figure out what the whole background uh, kind of thing is. Interesting. But then there's also... The draw. What's my movement speed? Why do, why do I have that? Don't see that anywhere. Oh boy. Uh, because I could go like Wood Elf or like... High elf. What's the difference between a Wood Elf and a High Elf? Oh, one is the... Oh, one has a Stealth kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And more movement speed. Whew, Wood Elf. And then we have, you have a weapon proficiency with spears, by the type of... I need weapon proficiency with like crossbows and stuff. Which of those is weapon proficiency? There, draw weapon training. Rapier, short sword, and hand cro oh, and hand crossbow. Yes, hand crossbow is cool and all, but... Uh, I don't know if they actually fix the whole thing. Short bow, long bow? No. Humans... Hmm, 
It doesn't say anything about crossbows though. Interesting. The whole lucky thing in the roller one for an attack roll ability. Da, 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 da. This makes things so much nicer, but I don't need this. <laughs> um, this one makes us faster, and I'm not going to do some 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 slow stuff though. So what else? Martial prodigy. Ah. Uh, light and medium armor. Wait a minute. As well as proficiency with a short sword, long sword, and great sword. Yeah. Not that much. No. Uh, advantage in intelligence, wisdom, and charisma savings. Yes. What about this one, though? I mean, I had a really good idea of using those. Oh, yes. When you land a critical hit with a melee uh, weapon attack, your damage dies are triple. But we are not playing with a um, melee, we are playing with, like, range. What does this one do? Make flame. The magic hand, which means I get an additional cantrip. Okay. Very interesting, very interesting, very interesting. I mean, I can use cantrips a lot. The fastest dragon ever, pretty much. I'm definitely not going for that. Yeah, I'm going to go for the green one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just hope that works. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so either we are going for green dragonborn dude. Um, but I don't know what else gets better in here. Okay, investigation religion and inside what else is here? Whoa. Oh, there's a persuasion. Turn on the charm. Coax and cajole. Performance entertain audiences. Command the stage. Intimidation. Deception. Survival. I still don't know what this is. I mean, it probably gets, like, uh, rolled for in certain situations, but how and why and whatever. Recognize symptoms, diagnose stuff, read people in situations, influence animals, pet all of the dogs, religion, nature, recognize plants and animals, hug trees, analyze clues, solve mysteries. Oh, investigate. Yeah, that's actually... Why do we have investigation? I don't know where that one came from, but we have it. Hmm... And the list below. If you are proficient in a skill, you add a bonus to those skill checks, making you more likely to succeed. Athletics, acrobatics, sleight of hand. Ah, there we go. And stealth, of course. Magic interact with enchanted items. Yes. Okay. So we... Oh, look at this. There are um, limits to what we can select here. Receive a bonus to every skill that you are proficient in. Uh, da -da -da -da. Increases. Da -da -da -da. Inherited from background. Inherited from background. Oh. So we could maybe uh, supercharge all of this even more. But how much do you actually need from the background? Sage, Soldier, Urchin, Noble, okay. Oh, that is nice. But I'm still not quite sure if I should go with this race or not. I mean, it's, it is one of the coolest one because of the burning eyes, right? They're the nicest. So... Poison damage, can see in the dark, proficiency with this. I am looking for a class that has a proficiency with crossbows. And uh, the only ones that I could think about are these ones here. But I do just not know. Well, I can find that. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting. Skills with proficiency. So we got two from the class. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, that's the class thing. 
And this is the whole being human thing. And because the uh, Dragonborns are the worst, <laughs> they don't get a racial bonus in here. That's actually... That is not good. Okay, what about the Githyanki? How do they work? Same thing. Okay. So there are certain races that are just too overpowered or whatever. What about those? Also not. Look at that. Okay, so it's an inherent human trait. Very interesting. So humans are just better for some reason. Uh, very, 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 very interesting. What about half-elves, though? Same thing. Okay. So humans are just better. Unbelievable. Either you want to play a kind of funny class, right? Or you really want to play a good class. And somehow, the goodness comes from the humans only. Okay, but what about those, though? Rapier, short sword, and hand crossbow. Weapons like crossbows, hand crossbows. No, wait a minute. Um... I mean, proficiency is sure. <sighs> Represents whether you are trained in a weapon type, tool or skill. Provides a bonus to associated roles, making you more likely to succeed. high that bonus is supposed to be. It's added to ability checks and saving throws against skill. Uh, you are proficient in making them more likely to da 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 da. But how much is that? How high is your proficiency bonus? Because then I could just think about something. Like, this one just gives you additional uh, proficiencies. I may not need uh, the proficiencies. Yeah, maybe you... Yeah, oh, kind of stupid. You can probably uh, use every kind of uh, weapon here. Yeah? Do you need proficiency? I don't think so. Mm. BG3. Proficiency. Okay, uh, what does it do? Proficiency is added to the D20 rolls that a character is proficient in. These are determined by a race, yada yada yada. Each player character begins the game with a proficiency bonus of plus two, increasing by plus one uh, every four levels to a maximum of four. Uh, the die roll modifies the same, da 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 da. Can acquire skill proficiencies and so on. Some weapons, armor, or tools require proficiency to be used effectively. Makes sense. Proficiencies are featured. Uh, that allow a character to use it. Da, 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 da. Interesting. Ah, uh, then there's requirements. All clouds level four. There's like name, skilled, feed, feature. Da, 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 da. No. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So, when a creature is proficient in building a weapon, they add the proficiency bonus to attack rolls with that weapon. When the weapon is equipped in the main hand, it also enables special properties and actions of that weapon type, such as tenacity, piercing, flourish, and so on. Hmm. Any character can still try to use any type of equipment, but if they lack pro proficiency, they will suffer from certain penalties, and we don't want that. Uh-huh. Okay. So it has nothing to do with being able to use it, because, uh... Old Baldur's Gate. So... Human versatility. Select an additional skill to be proficient in. Your carrying capacity is increased by a quarter. And I like having higher carrying capacity, right? Hmm...
Positive to it. Finesse weapons, yes. Oh, wait a minute. Um, effectiveness with ranged and finesse weapons. Um, is a crossbow considered to be a ranged weapons? Yes. Um, but are they like strength based or uh, finesse based? That is the question. Um, what about simple two-handed range weapons? Okay, that's like bows. Simple comment. Da, 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 da. Two-handed, dippable, whatever that means, and qualities ammunition. What? What is an ammunition? Uh, ammunition. Ammunition quality. And then it's also dippable. Okay, meaning you can like use it in a special kind of way. Wait. Ah, no, light crossbow still has the same thing. So for the simple one, that's true. And what about the martial? Ah, uh, well, I can't use it right now, but maybe I can use it later. Martial range weapon. Yes, light ammunition dippable. Interesting. Hmm. I really try to make that work somehow. Hmm. Well, I'm not using intelligence, uh, like, I can just cast it on myself and it should always kind of work, right? Mm. And when it comes to, like, cantrips and so on, it doesn't seem to have a check. There's a deck save, yes. Uh, but... What does it? To hit with certain... Yeah, to hit with certain spells, but what happens if you want to hit yourself? Is that considered to be a 100% chance all the time, or not? That's something that I'm not quite sure about. Hmm. So, if we lower it a little bit, how do the cantrips change? Plus two. Interesting. And we got that one, the improved spellcasting for wizards, yeah, sure. Plus two from proficiency. From proficiency, where do we get this proficiency from there? That's bonus. Ah, religion, probably. Intelligence plus two. Or investigation? No, no, it has nothing to do with it. Nah, it's just stupid. Um, it is an intelligence role. Uh, uh, that's the thing that we can use. Whoa, look at this. If we click on that, we get a plus two. That's awesome. Anything gets a plus two. Oh, that's overpowered. Acrobatics keeps your balance land on your feet. Helps you resist being shoved. Stay out of sight. That could also help. Hmm. And that's, of course, it's to remember the past of the world and its people. Mm, animal handling? No. <sighs> Spot hidden details. I mean, perception is kind of useful, right? Skill proficiency. Background. I really do need a different kind of background, though. Um... Boy, I'm not quite sure, but I do know that I'm definitely going to play a wizard. Questions just which of these? 
I don't need a hand crossbow. I'm probably going for like light crossbow or anything like that. But right now I could use dual wielding. Rapier, short sword. What if I go for a martial weapon? Could is there a race in here that has martial proficiencies? Not really. I don't see it in here. Nope, I don't see it. The general proficiency only comes from the race itself. Eh, the race, the class itself. Interesting. The draw for some reason have the coolest bonuses. Ah, come on. So, longsword. If I go with spears and pikes and so on, they do have higher range, which means it's easier for me to hit the enemy. Hmm, halflings are lucky, but no, we're definitely not playing a halfling. I am going for like crossbows. Who would benefit from that a lot? Githyanki, absolutely not. Oh no, wait a minute, what about heavy? Nah, there's no heavy armor bonus. Finder Serving Pro against Poison, no. But I have to figure out which one I'm going for. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so it's either Thrall because of this stuff. It just has an interesting item variety in it. Efficiency bonus to attack rolls with light crossbows, yes. Oh yeah, I wanted to know like what the uh, light crossbow scales with. Totally forgot about that. Um Light Crossbow. Uh do, 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 Dex or strength. So they have implemented it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so answer below seems to be the, 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 the crossbows do add dex modifier to damage. Hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, it stays here. They have finesse weapons, and finesse weapons in general mean melee weapons. Um, scales with a dexterity instead of your strength if your dexterity is higher, yes. And this one affects uh, the range stuff, so what I need is all of. I can only get 16, very interesting. Or like, the highest one I can get is 15, okay. What about like, elves? How do they work? Can they, no, they can't have more humans. Also, okay, so 15 is the highest that you can put abilities in here, very interesting. Uh, we also need a lot of constitution in order to not die, that would be helpful. Um, strength is unnecessary, physical power. Meat weapons also determines how far you can jump. Well, we have a spell for that, but still. Agility, finesse. Yes, so we need this one. Back to initiative and armor class. Anything else does not increase my armor class, just this one. Eight points. And then there's this. And 
intuition. Where do we place these points in question? Hmm. I mean, I could at least go for traders' prices. <sighs> Some charisma in here, but come on. Wisdom checks. Senses and intuition. I like myself some wisdom. So, we could go with a basic amount of intelligence. <laughs> uh, we are going for wisdom. Uh, maybe I could go with something different here. Like a bonus to constitution. Uh, and the rest goes into decks. This is where our focus lies. What do we do with this one, though? We could get a bonus in stealth to not be seen, but we do need nimble fingers to steal stuff. Recognize plants and animals, hug trees. Understand holy rites. Uh, this is so stuffy related, it's annoying. Oh boy, it could take ages for me to create a character. You got to be kidding me. Um. I mean, persuasion helps, right? But this one scales with charisma, doesn't it? So what I need uh, is something that scales with the stats that I have a lot of. Meaning that uh, constitution and dexterity are the ones, right? Constitution and dexterity. So yeah, stealth and acrobatics. Keep your balance land on your feet. Wild nipple fingers steal stuff. Hmm. Interact with enchanted items. Yeah, that is something that I don't have. Same for history, investigation. Intelligence, intelligence, wisdom, animal handling. Alright. That could help. Uh, inside. Read people and situations. You take lies. Medicine. Perception. No. You may need perception. Okay, what about this one? Uh, Investigation, well, that's kind of cool and all, but that may not work. Recognize magic, interact with enchanted items. Uh, we're not going for intelligence, we're going for the wisdom stuff. If we even have more to select in here. That's working. Well, there are limits. Okay. Hmm. But this one comes from the wizard, right? Where does it? No, wait a minute. It comes from the backstory. Ah, inside and religion. In, no, that's the backstory. Inside and religion. And that one comes from the class. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Where does it come from, this stuff? Huh, huh, huh? Nope, okay. Uh, it's class, yeah, the symbol is the class symbol. Uh, the thing is, I, you just don't see it because everything has a tick mark next to it. So you do not really recognize it. It would be better if the whole circle is green, right? Without the tick mark in it. So you can see the icon inside the circle. Like red meaning there's something missing, green means go. Very simple setup. You can even turn it into some more metallic kind of color. But okay, uh, let's go into backstories in the next episode. Uh, the class thingy and uh, ability kind of thingy.
took forever already. Until next time, then like and subscribe it. Ta-ta!